And it really just seems across the breadth of uh, debt markets, whether you're talking about government bonds or corporate debt, that we're getting to a level where yields and opportunities are starting to look more enticing. You're absolutely right, Heidi. I mean, the investment community has been complaining about yields being too low for too long, probably for 18 months. And then now yields have risen, spread have widened. So fixed income assets have repriced aggressively um, and rapidly here to date. So value started to emerge in, in fixed income assets. Forward-looking returns now on fixed income assets can be quite tempting. Um, let me take an Asia, for example. Now, if we look at the investment grade, uh, Asia investment grade corporate yield, are getting really, really interesting at a 5.1%. That's 270 basis points higher than just 18 months ago. Right? So investors are currently at a much better starting point now versus 18 months ago. There's much more crucial for price risk now versus then. Is there appetite for China credit or would you need to see some more significant signals to suggest that we're past the peak of the pessimism? The very weak data that we saw yesterday shouldn't be much of a surprise to the market because the resources have been prioritized to contain COVID. We see mobility uh, and activity have been restricted in major economic zones in China. Now, the near-term growth remains quite challenging, and I think sentiment's likely to remain quite fragile. But we are approaching peak China pessimism for three reasons. I think one is the latest COVID wave appears to have peaked, and we've seen this in Hong Kong, right? Two months after that, we peak and it could move on. So this could eventually pave the way for lockdown easing in those cities in coming weeks. And the secondly, well, monetary policy remains a bit moderate. Physical policies are likely becoming more aggressive and high frequency data uh, right now show early signs of improvement in infrastructure spending and infrastructure investment and the supply chain. For example, aluminum output actually is at record high. The blast of furnace in China is also running at a pretty high capacity at the moment. And of course, the three is the property. I mean, we see that more and more property easing mm -hmm. um, policies are coming to the market, reaching a critical mass. So we don't need to be too pessimistic here. Right. And I guess it depends on what kind of corporation you are, whether depressed <clears throat> consumer sentiment after all these lockdowns, see how weak retail sales were, for crying out loud, or even business sentiment when it comes to new investment, how that's going to play out. You think defaults are already priced in, is there any area we are especially worried about? And what are you looking for to say, oop, better take that off the list? Yes, you're right. Uh, the defaults have been priced in, and therefore you can see that currently when there is a headline, there's another default headline. The market seems to be quite uh, aloof uh, about it. But sentiments remains very weak. It feels almost like the market is stuck here without any directions, it's trying to find directions here. So, so as for the market to move forward, um, I think we need to watch. One is how those restructurings are proposed and what's the recovery values like. And and also any differentiated uh, treatment okay. between onshore and offshore bond holders and, uh, you know, whether the actual economy is going to recover. Okay, besides China, uh, what other de developing nation credit markets do you see some good picks? Um, if we talk about Asia here, I actually think that ex-China high yield, which means majority of those high yield corporates in Southeast Asia, the Indian, Philippines, Indonesia, are very attractive. They used to trade actually tighter than U.S. high yield in the past, on average over the past 15 years. But now they offer almost 300 basis points of pickup over U.S. high yield. And those are really high quality uh, uh, corporates with very strong balance sheet. So, Jenny, uh, in terms of central banks and uh, global central banks, is this all about the Federal Reserve in your mind? Or when you look to the Reserve Bank of Australia, when you look to the Bank of Korea, which just, it, in Chung, Ri Chang Young, the new chief, just saying he could see 50 basis point rate hikes. How does that enter into the picture for Asia uh, credit markets more broadly? 
Yeah, so Asia has been、mm, playing catch up、um, to Fed lately, and you've been led mainly by North Asian countries, ex China again, ex China. So this slowing global growth environment means that the external demand conditions for Asia will soften. However, we think domestic demand will help fill the gap, help because most of the large Asian economies are in the mid cycle in terms of the expansion and supported by fuller reopening.、Okay. Now, of course, China is is a different. Story. Story, but now I would just think that the, the, we will see more normalization in terms of policy across Asian、okay. countries.